Yo, you're now watching Urban Social, Urban Social TV. Now, here are some interesting facts about the mastermind, yeah. which uh, give you an idea of how important yeah. it is and how necessary that you embrace uh -uh. this principle and make use of it in the I don't know how sure long that I'm basically. here, any second can be gone. Solid. Yeah, it is solid. Um, I think definitely. Um, actually, when the book first came out, I went to the Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. and I guess they weren't really expecting for it to sell so, out in the yeah. way that it did. So they, the Barnes and Noble, had only ordered like two or three copies. Like, can you believe that? Two or three. Two or three copies, and I'm, uh, I'm I ain't gonna even get into why I think uh, that was the case, but um, they had uh, only ordered two or three copies, so they were already sold out. So I actually ended up having to wait about three weeks okay. um, to get a hard copy of the book. But I think that it definitely lived up to the hype. And I'm not just saying that, I'm actually very hard on books. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I love the fact that it was like his real voice, like how he speaks and says things, his terminology, vernacular, yeah. all of that was kept in attack and I and kept in attack. And I felt like um, when I was reading it, I could see it. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. definitely was, I definitely think it lived up to the hype. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say is that he kept it, like you said, he kept it original, he kept it in his voice, and it wasn't nothing that was like uncut. Like, I can remember when um, when him and Walker fell out. Mm. I can remember yep. when... Um, Twitter when, rants. Yeah, the Twitter rants. That, that went on for like a week. So yeah. I can just imagine like how it was at that point of time. And so just living, living to see him write about it, mm -hmm. it's just like crazy. Like... Right. Oh, who would give another book? Would you read it? If it was like a, a sequel? Oh, yeah, another book. Definitely. Okay. Because I want to I wanna know more. Yeah. Like after the last chapter, I was like, eh, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. I think it ended off the way that it should have, um, but I would still want to know more about mm -hmm, him. Yeah. And um, I don't know if a lot of you know that he actually wrote this whole book while he was in jail. Yeah. Um, so like I said, it has his vernacular and everything, mm -hmm. like, you know, true, very, very true to him. And um, the book is just dope, y'all. Yeah, it's a dope book. <laughs> yeah. Like, over, in general, it's, it's a dope book. Um, yeah. I definitely think he was truthful about everything, mm -hmm. even some stuff that we probably shouldn't know. Okay. <laughs> I felt like, I was like, in some instances, is he dry snitching a little yeah. bit? Because it's like, it's incredibly detailed. I mean, yeah. from selling drugs to what type of drugs he was taking, how he got into it. I mean, sex, yeah. everything, just very, very open. Yeah. You know, and I was shocked by that. Because most people, they'll like, when you see a lot of celebrities do interviews, like, you'll never hear Jay-Z giving out names of, nah. you know, you know, never. Jim Huh? Uh, so chicken squad. Very, very. <laughs> so when you read this book, let me tell y'all, it is juicy. Like that's why I say it's like a movie because it's just incredibly detailed. So one thing that caught me, what I was surprised about was the phone conversation that DJ Drummond set up between him and Jeezy, and he said that you know him and Jeezy had already squashed their beef mm -hmm. like before that. So I kind of feel like that was that was something we need to know though because they had already squashed the beef and it's like why are you trying to make a moment after this after we already right everything so well you know what i didn't like um after that i think when they met up in mm -hmm. person yeah. and gz was kind of like let's not make a scene like let's not do this right here yeah. he didn't want everybody to know they had became cool like that's that's whack to me yeah, that is whack. but i mean and he approached gucci <laughs> it was like let's not let's not do this here like what is yeah, what does that, that mean? mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that was that was messed up. I think that's and I would I, if I was Mitch, I would lose respect for Jeezy as well too, um, which I think he did. So. Yeah, because I mean, even like on his most recent um, Breakfast Club interview, I think mm -hmm. he was asked like you know if he were to see Jeezy or Ti in a party or whatever, like what he's speaking, he was just like I don't really feel like it's necessary that like, they stay on their side, ain't no be da da da, yeah. Yeah. which is growth and yeah. you know it's just true with a lot of things like. Some people you just can't can't rock with. Um, for me, my favorite quote quote he said, "If you gonna keep looking back, if you keep looking back, you gonna trip moving forward." Yeah, and I think, it, right? mm -hmm, yeah. and I think that's like the theme of like this whole book because I feel like a lot of his struggles mm -hmm. um, had to deal with him struggling with his past. Yeah, um, you know, whether it be from when he was robbed the first time. Right. Um, to you know that incident that happened with with Jeezy and someone trying to trying to kill him, yeah. you know all the way to you know poor mixtape sales and album sales. Like he just wasn't really able to handle 
stress and rejection and still had a lot of things that he was dealing with from his past yeah. um that that basically affected him a lot so, so yeah so yeah so if you in the comments um just drop and you read the book just drop your favorite quote from the book your favorite mm -hmm. chapter and we can see if we, if we line up on the same page with it definitely yeah and so what we're going to start doing so our first episode is um we like to pull out sort of like the main points mm -hmm. of the book yeah and um like to basically narrow it down to three main things that you should get from this book so right. we've done that here and so the three are and then we'll you know of yeah. course go into detail for you but um the three are is um the importance of addressing old demons in your life I feel like right. a lot of us have things that have happened in our past that needs to be addressed before we move forward um the second thing is building your brand before you go major yeah, um so important. yeah gucci so important. was just a pioneer at this um and the third is and the fourth actually we have a bonus one huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the third is you have to work extremely hard Yes. Um, to reach success in your in your life, and then the last, which is, which is our bonus one, is you can't be no hater if you're trying to be successful. So you gotta, you gotta get the hate out your heart. Definitely. You gotta get the hate out your heart. Definitely. I, I think the one that um, really stuck with me the most is you have to work hard regardless. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I think as artists, um, people always think that you know you have this hype behind you. Mm -hmm. And you can just move how you want to move, but you really just got to be, like, in the gym working, 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 working. Like, Definitely. shot after shot. Like, even if, you know, the book had, it was a national uh, bestseller, mm -hmm. you still got to write another book. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So you got to keep it up. Like, you got to stay relevant. You got to right. stay motivated. And you got to stay working. Like, that's just the, that's how it is. And I think that's how it should be for everybody. So, Definitely. yeah, I think that was a good four three plus the bonus yeah uh, so yeah <laughs> yeah well um for me definitely the one the major message that stuck out to me was the fact of building your brand before you try to go major yeah um i know so many people whether it be they're trying to get into the music industry or they're um you know trying to be trying to become social media influencers they're just right. trying to brand themselves in general um who they're major focus is like i gotta get picked up by a label or i gotta get sponsored or whatever but the smartest thing that you can do as a talent as a as a brand is building yourself up in your area yeah. so if you're in charlotte or you're in houston or you're wherever make sure that people know who you are in that area because you want to go to these meetings like you know he was able to, to get a deal with atlantic and yeah. all he did he was an independent artist and atlantic is huge um you have to have something to be able to bring to the table. Um, and if you have a large audience, if you have X amount of you know streams or X amount of followers or whatever, and you can prove that, hey, I'm coming to you with something, so you partnering with me is not just a one-sided thing, it's a, it's a mutually it's cool. yeah. you know, beneficial thing, then you can, you can have a better seat at the table. And yeah. so I think that that's like the smartest sort of um, you know, business moves that I feel like he made, not feeling that pressure to feel like I have to be up underneath someone to be successful. You can do this on your own and you can create your own buzz and then, you know, then go, go from there. From there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, because that's what, that's kind of what everybody's doing now, the independent, the mm -hmm. independent route, Chance the Rapper did it. Yeah, um, Chance is doing great. Chance is. Out of here. Yeah, <laughs> out of here. Mm -hmm. So, overall rating of the book, what you think? One out of 10. I give it. I give it a nine. A nine? I give it a nine. Okay. So why shouldn't it, why didn't you give it a ten? I don't ever give it a ten. Uh -huh. <laughs> Make it ten. No, um, I just feel like more of the story could have been told. So, I feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I won't say it was just like a perfect, uh, book. Yeah. yeah, more of the story could have been told. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's why. I give it eight. You why? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, was a, it was a good book, but I don't know. I don't want to compare his book to anybody else's, but I'm going to compare his book to somebody Just else's. It, but yeah, yeah um, the other autobiographies that I've read have been, they gave like full, like the full story. I feel like pieces were left out um, of this book. And not that he robbed us, but he kind of like, took a little from us 
So, really? like, yeah, like you said, I think more of the story could have been told. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, I, I give it an eight. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something, though, that I think people should read. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. You definitely should go get the book. Yeah. Um, Audible, Barnes Noble, Noble, Amazon. Amazon. Okay. I usually get my books from Amazon. Amazon, okay. Yeah, I usually get my books from Amazon. So, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, it's like $27, so it's a little pricey. But, I mean, I now feel like... Got Prime. Not if you got well, okay, he gave me out of the cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that even if you're not really a fan of Gucci Mane, um, I think that there's still a lot of lessons like we pointed yeah. out that yeah, can definitely. be learned um, from him. So, yes, that was our first episode, y'all. Episode number one. How did we do? <laughs> <laughs> um, episode number one. I think it was short. It, it was, was short. short. Okay. Point. Mm, I mean, which is good. Yeah. I think if you're reading a book, it should only be about, like, if you want to read a book daily, about 30 minutes a day. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. After you read the book, you listen to our podcast. And then you good to know. Yeah, go on the internet and tell us how we did. Yeah. What you thought, share your comments, and we good. Exactly. So, so yeah. we will be coming to you guys bi-weekly, bi-weekly. every month. Um, we already have a list of dope books. We don't want to give y'all everything right Thank now. Yeah. Okay? You can't give it out right now. But we have a list of dope books that span from celebrity to business to self-help and relationships. Um, relationships. Yes, we had a real good relationship one. They're, um, they're not even ready for that one. Yeah, purpose, purpose in your 20s. We got a good book on that one. Yeah. So that one's pretty dope. So make sure yeah. y'all just tune in, man. Uh, we'll be here, like she said, bi-weekly. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll have the books. And if you want to get the book, we'll drop the book sometime soon. But not on the podcast right now. Yeah. So, yeah. We got to leave a little little <laughs> element of surprise. So, yeah. But um, make sure to follow us on Instagram at mastermindpod. Mastermindpod. All right. So we will see y'all soon and we out. We out. <laughs>